Spark plug maintenance is one of the easiest and most effective ways to monitor the health of your cylinders. All spark plugs should be checked, cleaned, and adjusted on a regular basis. In fact, it's a good idea to maintain your plugs at each oil change. Not only will clean plugs help your engine perform better, but each plug tells a story about what's going on inside the cylinder. As with every inspection, it's a lot better to identify potential problems on the ground rather than in the air. We'll begin by inspecting the ignition system, starting at the magneto. Most aircraft have two magnetos, one on either side of the engine, and powering different plugs in each cylinder. This is what provides the ignition redundancy that helps make aircraft engines so reliable. Look closely at each magneto. Make sure that there aren't any cracks in the housing, and check the quality of the wire attachments. Magnetos have two types of wires attached to them, ignition switch wires, or P-leads, and ignition wires. The P-lead is a single shielded wire that comes directly from the ignition switch in the cockpit to each magneto. The purpose of the P-lead is to disable the magneto. Only the center conductor of the P-lead connects to the P-lead terminal on the magneto. The shielding is grounded to the magneto housing. Inside the cockpit, when we switch between left, right, off, and both, we're controlling the P-lead and grounding out the magneto we want switched off. It's very important to make sure that the P-lead is intact and securely attached to the magneto. If the P-lead is loose or broken, the magneto is hot and the engine could fire if the prop is moved. Next, inspect the ignition wires. The wires should be clean, secure, and free of twists and chafing. If the harness shows any significant signs of chafing or cracking, you should work with your mechanic to change the harness. Start at the number one cylinder and remove the ignition lead connectors. Always use two wrenches when removing or tightening the ignition wire connectors, one on the small wire hex and one on the large spark plug nut. You don't want to twist the wire during removal or installation. A 3 quarter inch wrench will work on 5 8 inch barrel plugs and a 7 8 wrench will work for 3 quarter inch barrel plugs. For the small hexes, use a 7 16 wrench. Once the lead has been removed from the spark plug, carefully inspect the wire terminal ends, especially the contact springs. Clean the springs carefully and if you find a broken or corroded spring, the spring should be replaced. We recently replaced our old harness with this new slick harness, so we're ready to go. Now that the wire is out of the way, use your spark plug socket to remove the plug. Carefully remove the plug and place it in a plug tray. A plug tray is an easy way to keep the plugs organized and protected. Now if you do happen to drop a plug, always throw it away. If you drop a plug, you can damage the ceramic insulator and it's simply not worth taking the risk. Each plug should look about the same. They should be dry and light brown or gray without any heavy deposits. Now let's take a look at some unhealthy plugs for comparison. This plug has lead fouling. You can tell by the dark gray deposits clogging up the insulator and electrode. You can use a dental pick to carefully pick out the lead deposits. If your plugs have lead fouling, you should consider leaning more aggressively, especially on the ground. Also, you might want to consider a fuel additive such as TCP. TCP is a lead scavenging agent that helps reduce lead buildup on plugs. If your plugs have light gray or white electrodes, they may indicate an overly lean condition. This can be a result of overly aggressive leaning, a clogged injector, or an air induction leak. If your plugs have an excessive amount of soot like this one, your engine may be running overly rich. If you find a plug that is black and oily, you may have oil leaking past the cylinder rings. This is a common problem in high time engines and might also show up as low compression during the annual inspection. If you find any of these conditions, check with your mechanic to decide if you should pursue the issue further. Now it's time to clean the plugs. The easiest way is to use an aircraft spark plug cleaner. Your mechanic probably has one you can use. But if he or she doesn't, you can purchase an inexpensive plug cleaner like this one from any aircraft supply house. It's a special air-powered cleaner that lightly sandblasts the plug electrode and insulator. If you use a plug cleaner that's not specifically designed for aircraft plugs, it may be too abrasive and can ruin your plugs. 
If you have heavy lead deposits, you can use a vibrating cleaner or a dental pick to carefully remove the lead. On the outside of the plug, you should inspect and clean the plug threads where the plug goes into the engine, as well as the lead threads at the top. Finally, make sure the barrel well is clean and free of any moisture or debris. Once the plugs have been cleaned, they need to be carefully inspected. If any of the ceramic is either chipped or cracked, the plug needs to be replaced. You should also replace the plug if the electrodes are badly worn or the shielding or barrel are corroded or damaged. To check the electrode wear on most common massive electrode plugs, you can use a wear gauge such as this one. After gapping the plug, you simply compare the electrodes to the hole in the gauge. Now it's time to set the spark plug gap. For this, you need to use a feeler gauge and an electrode adjustment tool. These are also very inexpensive and you can get them from the same place as the plug cleaner. Start by checking the plug gap using the feeler gauge. Chances are that the spark plug electrode gap has grown in service due to wearing of the electrodes. In this case, place the plug in the gap setting tool and gently move the electrodes in slightly. Check the gap with the feeler gauge for the correct setting. If the gap needs to be smaller, repeat the procedure. Never adjust the electrodes while the feeler gauge is in place. This can damage the plug. Most massive electrode plugs use a gap setting somewhere between .016 and .021, but check your aircraft maintenance manual for the specific gap setting for your aircraft. Now that all of the plugs are clean and set, it's time to install new gaskets and rotate them in the tray. Don't reuse old spark plug gaskets. New gaskets are inexpensive, so I highly recommend using new ones every time. Rotating the plugs in the tray is very easy. Simply swap plugs for cylinders 1 and 4 and from bottom to top at the same time. Do the same thing for cylinders 2 and 3. There's a similar pattern for six-cylinder engines. Check the plug manual for the correct pattern. This swap pattern does two things. First, it rotates bottom and top plugs. This helps even out problems caused by gravity, such as lead or oil buildup. Second, it swaps plugs in polarity. This evens out the wear on the plug electrodes. Finally, put a light coating of aircraft spark plug anti-seize on the threads. It's best not to use anti-seize on the first two threads to make sure you don't get any on the electrode. When reinstalling the plugs, Put them in by hand until they get finger tight and then torque them as specified in your aircraft maintenance manual. When reattaching the ignition wires, remember to use two wrenches when tightening the nut to make sure you don't twist the wire. Also be very careful not to over tighten the nut. Check the maintenance manual for the proper torque. Finally, perform a thorough ground check to make sure that the engine is performing properly before taking the plane back into the air.